So you need to study for the PE exam and you're wondering what types of problems will be on the PE exam. What is the breakdown of the possible questions that you will see? In this week's edition of Pass the PE Exam, I will walk you through exactly how to find out what types of problems and how many of each you will encounter on the PE exam. But before I do that, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced. Whether it was due to a promotion, salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You really want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge. But through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything that you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments, I will answer them on future videos. Firstly, if you aren't too familiar with the PE exam, let me start by telling you what it is. The Principles and Practice of Engineering exam is the examination required for one to become a licensed professional engineer or PE in the United States. It is the second exam required coming after the Fundamentals of Engineering exam and is created and scored by the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying or NCEES. As a general rule, a professional engineer who has number one, an approved four-year engineering degree, number two, four years of qualifying engineering experience, and number three, who successfully completes the eight-hour Fundamental of Engineering or FE examination can take the PE exam. That being said, you should confirm these items with your local state education board as some states do vary on these experience timelines and requirements. So, what is the breakdown of the possible questions that you will see on the PE exam? To figure this out, you should visit the NCWES website, specifically this URL, ncwes.org forward slash engineering forward slash PE. You can see the URL on the screen and I will put a link in the comments. There you will see the 16, yes, 16 disciplines that the PE exam is offered in. Agricultural and biological engineering, architectural engineering, chemical, civil, control systems, electrical and computer, environmental, fire protection, industrial and systems, mechanical, metallurgical and materials, mining and mineral processing, naval architecture and marine, nuclear, petroleum, and structural. Did you even know that there were that many? To determine the question breakdown, ultimately what you need to find is a document that is titled the exam specifications for the specific exam that you plan to take. So if you visit ncws.org forward slash engineering forward slash PE, then click on the exam discipline that you are planning to take you'll be taken to a page that provides a further breakdown of that discipline. For some of the disciplines, like architectural engineering, when you click that discipline, you'll be taken to a page that provides a link to the exam specifications. However, for the civil exam, it is a little different in that the PE civil exam is a breadth and depth examination. This means that examinees work in the breadth section in the morning and then one of five depth modules in the afternoon, depending on which they choose to take. The breadth section contains questions from all five areas of civil engineering, where the depth section focuses more closely on a single area of practice. So when you click on the civil discipline from ncws.org forward slash engineering forward slash PE, you'll be able to see the five different civil depth exam options. Construction, geotechnical, structural, transportation and water resources, and environmental. You can then click on the depth exam that you plan to take and find that exam's specifications. If you click on the discipline that you are planning to take, you'll be taken to the exam specifications document that lists the different knowledge areas. For example, some of them for the civil transportation depth exam are vertical design and intersection geometry, just to name a few. 
and you will also see next to each of the knowledge areas the number of questions that will be on the exam for that area. So for example, for the civil transportation depth exam, it shows that there will be four questions on vertical design and four questions on intersection geometry. However, there will be 11 questions on traffic engineering. Being aware of this breakdown prior to beginning your study preparation can help you to really ensure that you are dedicating enough time and energy to each knowledge area. So essentially, this is a two-step process. Step one, decide on which discipline of the PE exam that you will take. Step two, visit the NCWS website and review the problem breakdown for that specific discipline in the exam specifications. And remember, if you take one of the disciplines that has both a breadth and depth exam, you will need to also select which depth topic you plan to take. Again, you can find the link to that all important NCWS webpage in the description below. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will be solving some practice problems for each of the knowledge areas on the PE exam. Pass the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video, and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you'd like answered. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.